morning San Antonio starts right now. An overnight shooting sends a man to a San Antonio hospital. Now police looking for clues that could lead him to the shooter. We'll tell you what they know so far. We have several folks who have been here for decades, and I know for some of them that's probably the first time they've seen something like that happen. A Wichita State University basketball star played well enough Tuesday night to get a double-digit win, but it's his contribution after the game that has many talking. The story coming up in your morning headlines with David Sears. The annual KSAC Community Share the Shoes Drive continues with SAPD. Coming up, we'll tell you about the nonprofit that will receive the shoes this year. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is November 18th. Happy Friday Eve. We're very excited about that. And we're also excited about this nice weather change. You saw Tiffany out there in her coat. That's right. During the early morning show, reporter Jonathan Cotto had a vest on and then eventually we saw a jacket yeah. the whole nine yards. So it was, a, it was a layer <laughs> kind of morning. Katie Blake is in for Justin this morning. It's been breezy and noticeably cooler, Ms. Blake. Oh, definitely. And you can see that wind shaking our camera. The wind is going to be a bit of a nuisance all the way into the afternoon. So be ready for that. And just overall, be ready for a much cooler day today. Temperatures currently, we've got some upper 50s, low 60s in and around Bear County and in San Antonio. But we do have some 50s across a portion of the hill country zooming out a bit more temperature wise. We're down to 62 in Laredo, 61 over in Victoria. So generally 50s and 60s across the board and temperatures are going to have a really hard time getting out of the 60s for a lot of us today because of some lingering cloud cover and also a gusty north wind. As I mentioned, those gusts will stay up near 40 miles per hour all the way into the afternoon. We'll talk more about your Friday and your weekend forecast coming up. Also a little sneak peek of what you can expect on Turkey Day. Uh, but before we get to all that, today's pollen count is in. Molds are moderate today with a count of 950. Juniper is low with a count of 20. More weather coming up in just a bit. Guys. A uh, quick check of Transguide right now. We've got a major accident brewing right now. This is uh, if you're on your way from San Antonio towards Seguin, Gonzales or Houston. Eastbound 10. Uh, at Loop 1604, so that's uh, East Bear County. Again, east of the downtown area, uh, traffic on outbound 10 is stacking in that area. We will keep an eye on this for you. Yeah, big traffic jam. And for now, let's look at today's night at nine. With gas prices at a seven year high, President Biden is calling on the Federal Trade Commission to investigate if illegal conduct is to blame. The industry is pushing back, calling Biden's move a distraction and saying post pandemic demand for gas is simply outpacing supply. The average price nationwide this morning is $3.41 a gallon. That's up $1.29 from last year. Every American adult could soon become eligible for a COVID-19 booster. The FDA is expected to authorize shots for people 18 years and older as early as today. A dozen states are already moving ahead with expanding access to booster shots without waiting for federal approval. The jury in the Kyle Rittenhouse murder trial will deliberate for a third time today. The judge overseeing the case is weighing whether to declare a mistrial after defense attorneys claim they were given low quality footage of the incident compared to the footage given to prosecutors. The judge says the mistrial request will have to be addressed if there is a guilty verdict. A family who lost their loved one in the Astro World tragedy wants the organizers to pay. The family of 21-year-old Axel Acosta filed a $750 million lawsuit. It names Travis Scott, Live Nation, Apple Music, and the Harris County Sports and Convention Corporation, among others. Ten people died during the concert, all under the age of 30. The House of Representatives on Wednesday voted to censure Congressman Paul Gosar and remove him from one of his committee assignments. The censure resolution is the most severe form of punishment in the House. The vote comes after Gosar posted a violent photoshopped anime video on Twitter and Instagram appearing to kill Democratic Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and attacking President Biden. More than 10,000 workers at John Deere will soon be back on the job after a majority of union members voted to accept the company's final contract offer. The vote will end a five week long strike. The new offer includes an immediate 10% raise, an $8,500 signing bonus, along with yearly pay bumps. 
The cost of Thanksgiving dinner is up nearly 15% this year. The cost of the bird alone is up 24% from last year. Officials say the supply chain issues are behind the price increase along with difficulty predicting demand because of COVID. The longest partial lunar eclipse of this century and the longest in 580 years will grace the night sky tonight. NASA says the eclipse will last three and a half hours. It will begin a little after one o'clock Friday morning. Our weather team is predicting quite a few clouds. A big happy birthday to a couple of mice that have been around for nearly a century. Mickey and Minnie Mouse celebrating their 93rd birthday. They made their big debuts in an animated movie called Steamboat Willie in 1928. Fun fact, their original names were Mortimer and Minerva. And Mickey has a middle name, Theodore. And that's today's Nine at Nine. Back to Transguide, we have some new information coming in from Stephen Cavazos now. He is saying that it looks like a light pole went down in that area. Of course, we've had gusty winds all morning long. He says this CBS uh, energy is on the scene out there right now. He's also saying that this is 10 westbound at 1604 coming into San Antonio from the Seguin area. It's very possible that pole went down, that we had one or more vehicles hit that pole uh, on the lanes. You see the wind continues out, but again, CPS out there, 10 westbound at 1604 that is east of downtown San Antonio. And top stories we are following today. San Antonio police say they have very few clues about an overnight shooting in an east side neighborhood. It sent a man to a hospital left neighbors stunned at how close they came to the trouble came in. It happened rather in the 100 block of West Drexel near Hackberry. A neighbor called police around 3:30 this morning. Investigators found shell casings in the street, which could lead them to the shooter. They also found a man suffering from a gunshot wound. He was taken to a hospital by ambulance in stable condition. At least one home and one vehicle were also hit by bullets. No one else was hurt. Our Katrina Weber was on the scene all morning. She spoke with one man who says his mother was nearly hit by gunfire. She is shaken up, but OK. The shooter took off in a car, but police were not able to offer a description of it. This investigation is still underway. We will have updates on the news at noon, and that's also on KSET.com. And we are learning more about a deadly crash on the city's northwest side. This is a story we first told you about yesterday on early GMSA. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying the man killed as 43-year-old Jonathan Daughtry. The crash happened early yesterday morning on Hebner at Research Drive west of I-10. According to police, Daughtry crossed an area that did not have a crosswalk. A driver in a silver sedan that was driving on Hebner says he did not see Daughtry and hit him. The driver pulled over to help, but he died at the scene. Police say no criminal charges are pending. Happening this morning, Spurs Sports and Entertainment set to break ground on their new huge 50 acre development on the far northwest side. This uh, complex will feature a state of the art training facility for the Spurs, medical and research offices, retail shops and some green space. The Spurs are calling this $510 million project the Human Performance Campus. It's located off of Loop, Loop 1604 and Interstate 10 near the shops at La Cantera and Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. The groundbreaking ceremony starts at 10 this morning and we do have a crew there getting more details for the news at noon. In the meantime, you can check it out on our website at kset.com to see renderings of what the facility will look like. In your morning headlines, concerns about flooding in the Northwest and time is running out for a death row inmate. Plus more on the death of an up and coming rapper in Memphis and a star basketball player. Instead of talking trash, he's picking it up. David Sears is here with more. He stunned a lot of people in this arena. I can't wait to hear more about yeah. this. After the AV, we'll have it for you just a second. But first, let's get to this. We know that they got a lot of rain in great Northwest, but even residents up there are starting to get a little overwhelmed by all the rain now. This is happening in northern border town of Sumas, Washington, right across the border from Abbotsville, British Columbia, where they are watching their pump station because if it fails, that means more water for Sumas. About 75% of the homes in Sumas have already been inundated with flood waters from all that heavy rain this week. The good news is the waters are starting to recede. However, there are parts of the city now without power and getting power restored is a top priority up there. All right, this is the scene inside the state capital of Oklahoma yesterday. Those are supporters of death row inmate Julius Jones. As of right now, he only has hours to live. These supporters are trying to convince the governor of Oklahoma to follow the recommendation of the pardon and parole board, commute Jones sentence to life in prison. And we just got word that the governor, Kevin Stith, is informing the media outlets that he's gonna meet with parties involved and then make a decision. 
The support group that was there yesterday started with quiet prayers and turned into songs and chants. Students from area schools also joined in. The country's watching, you know, our kids are watching, and, uh, you know, we have the opportunity to show them, you know, love, decency, uh, and that life is important. Judge was convicted of shooting death of Paul Howell back in 1999 in Edmond, Oklahoma. He was 19. He's now 41. He has maintained his innocence. His lawyers say the case was flawed. Once again, the governor is going to hear from all parties involved and basically has three choices. Commute his sentence to life, delay the execution so he can take more time to review the case, or go ahead with the execution. As of now, Jones is scheduled to be executed at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Some in Memphis still mourning the loss of an up and coming rapper who goes by young Dolph. Dolph, who's 36, was gunned down while he was buying cookies at a Memphis bakery. Apparently, someone just drove up and shot him. So far, police don't have any suspects. It's a shock um, what that man meant to this city. And, you know, we love all of our artists here, you know, but um, it's like it was just something something special about about Dolph, his, his personality. Um, he was warm. Um, he was approachable. Um, if you knew him, you could text him and talk to him and, and, and laugh and, you know, and joke around. Um, so just his his presence alone, we are going to I know I'm, I'm going to miss him. And I, I know this city is going to miss him. And this is not the first time someone has tried to kill the rapper who has two children. In 2017, he was nearly killed in a shooting incident in Hollywood. He spent three weeks in the hospital recovering from three gunshot wounds. And finally this morning, your feel good story for a Thursday. You're looking at a cleanup crew getting after it. They are cleaning up an arena after a basketball game. Wichita State played in that game, but that guy right there, this guy right here, that's not part of the cleanup crew. No, no, he's part of the actual team that just got through playing on the floor. That guy is one of the star shocker basketball players, junior guard Dexter Dennis. After a game, he just decided to stick around and help clean up. Caught a few people off guard, but it was like he scored a slam dunk with the crew. We have several folks who have been here for decades, and I know for some of them that's probably the first time they've seen something like that happen. And uh, I, I just, from our custodial staff out to him, uh, we just want to say thank you for, for leading and uh, showing us that there's still folks out there that recognize the hard work that's done around here. So during the game, Dexter was 3 of 4, had 13 points. He's one of the top players in Wichita State Shocker history. He said he didn't do it for the publicity, wouldn't even do an interview, but he did tweet out that uh, don't do it for the attention, just gives me perspective on life. It could always be worse. Fantastic. So there wow, well, there's, cool. I, I'm going to mangle the saying, but there's something about, they say integrity is more about what you do when no one is looking. Yeah. I think this speaks volumes. This speaks, it speaks for itself. Yep. So, you know, and you can imagine the workers looking over and going, wow. <laughs> what's, that, wow. what's that kid doing? <laughs> that's yeah. like one of the best basketball players we've ever had. He's over here picking up trash. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's awesome cool. story. Guys got great character. Thank yep. you very much, David. Right now we're at 9 11, about 58 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A financial program at UTSA aims to help students pay for college, but thousands of dollars go untouched every year. Coming up, why so many students are not taking advantage of that program. But first, we take you live to the west side, where Tiffany Huertas has details on our Share the Shoes drive happening right now. A good pair of shoes is in need, as we often take that for granted. So many children in San Antonio for them, that need is quite real. KSET Community is continuing its effort to make sure kids have proper footwear by teaming up with the San Antonio Police Department to collect new shoes of all sizes. This is from toddlers to teenagers for the annual Share the Shoes Drive. This year's Share the Shoes will benefit the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services, and that's where we find Tiffany Huertas this morning. Tiffany, good morning to you. Good to see your smiling face. Talk to us about this organization. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. This organization is amazing. They're providing so many different services to this community. Just check it out. This is one of the rooms here at the Good Samaritan. They have an early childhood services program, a youth and teen program, and they even have a senior center here. It's incredible. Now, to talk more about the different services, we have Brandine Flores with the nonprofit. And good morning, Brandy. Can you tell us a little bit 
background about this organization. Good morning. We have a long history with our community. So we were founded by the Episcopal uh, Church of, of, I'm sorry, we were founded by the Episcopal Church West Diocese of Texas. And we have served for over 70 years here in our community, serving the 78207 zip code. So we provide different services for our community, different programs, resources, and tools. We even provide meals for our community. So we serve a wide uh, age range from six weeks all the way to our senior center. So in doing that, we believe in providing services that we work with people's strengths, so that way they feel empowered to then have a lasting impact with our community. And this is in the west side. Talk to us about the importance of these services here in the west side. So our zip code is the most underserved zip code here in San Antonio. So providing resources has a very lasting impact. We want to empower the community so that they feel that they can get out of this zip code and even come back and offer resources to the zip code so that they can help um, better the community. And the services didn't stop completely during the pandemic, right? No. Um, during the pandemic, we still had a drive through meal service because we realized that oftentimes the students here, they only have the one meal that's provided there at school. So we provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner and snacks for those students as well as our senior center. So we had drive through services and for our community that does not have technology, we did have, we opened our parking lot with hotspots Incredible. and we also opened classrooms so that they could use computers here. The magnificent things happening in yes. the West Side, that's <laughs> incredible. Talk to us about what does it mean for you all to get these shoes this holiday season? So partnering with organizations like SAPD is incredible for us. So for us, it's about a child opening gifts on Christmas morning and one of those gifts being a pair of shoes. Um, it allows them the opportunity to run around and be a kid without worrying about not having those resources available to them. So partnering with organizations like SAPD this holiday season means that we're able to provide resources that would otherwise be unavailable to our community. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank this morning. You. We'll talk a little bit more in the next half hour. <laughs> thank you. Um, take, out, take a look at this. There's still a lot of time to donate shoes this holiday season. Right now on your screen, you can look at the different locations where you can drop off the new shoes, and you have until November 30th to drop them off. Last year, KSAC community collected over 2,000 pairs of shoes, and we want to exceed that this year, of course. You can also make a monetary donation at the website, again, to support this nonprofit, Good Samaritan Community services. Back to you, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Tiffany. We look forward to that. Well, it's noticeably cooler out there. If you've stepped outside, it's very breezy. And Miss Pumpkin Spice Latte is here with more <laughs> on your Thursday forecast. I've already switched to the peppermint mocha cream. Oh, I've oh, really. Is Katie, that, let me say is that better looking at your face. I am so sorry for getting that wrong. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Um, I love days like this. It's a cold front day and uh, we've been so warm this week. Highs in the 80s, even some low 90s yesterday afternoon. So this is more like it, but the wind may be a bit of a nuisance at times today. Currently, we're actually seeing a good amount of sunshine now. Some high clouds, some mid high clouds will come and go throughout the day, but uh, of course, all eyes are on the partial lunar eclipse that happens overnight. I know we've got some uh, active astronomy lovers out there. So if this is something that you're hoping to see overnight, it, it is overnight. So you're I think Mike said this the other morning, you're either going to have to stay up very late <laughs> or get up very early for this. Um, it starts after 1 a.m. and it wraps up just before 5 a.m. The big question, of course, when it comes to events like this is uh, what's our cloud cover situation going to be like? And I do expect that we'll have some lingering cloud cover overnight into the pre-dawn hours of your Friday. So a quick look at future cast shows that we've got a good amount of cloud cover still out there behind the front that moved through earlier today. A lot of high cloud cover that will just kind of continue to hang around all the way into this afternoon. Some gradual clearing, I think, later in the day today and then as we head into the overnight hours. But we're not going to clear out completely overnight into early on Friday. So as far as viewing for the eclipse, you've got a better chance at seeing some decent clearing north 
of Highway 90 up toward Austin and then west toward the Hill Country. If you're along and south of Highway 90, I do think you're going to hold on to a decent amount of some mid and high level cloud cover overnight through the eclipse and then into early on Friday. So just something to keep in mind. As far as any rainfall goes, we were able to squeeze out a few showers with this front that now is moving into the Gulf of Mexico. You can see it there marked by a line of clouds. There's some rain down near Corpus Christi, but we've also got a few little showers and rumbles of thunder that have popped up across a portion of Edwards County. So if you're in Rock Springs, you've got a few showers and non severe storms around. I expect this activity to fizzle out as our air mass continues to become cooler and drier here as the day goes on. Currently just shy of 60 at the airport, low 50s in the hill country and 43 in Rock Springs. So it is cool and it is dry up in that portion of the hill country where we've got some of those thunder showers, so um, I don't think they'll have too much life left in them. That's for sure. Look at these dew points down a lot from this time yesterday. In fact, here in San Antonio, our dew point is down nearly 35 degrees from where it was this time yesterday morning, so that air is very, very dry behind this cold front. We've also got gusty north winds. We're gusting to near 30 miles per hour here in San Antonio, near 32 miles per hour in Hondo, but I expect we'll see our wind gusts peak as high as about 35, 40 miles per hour through early afternoon. As we get closer to sunset today, those wind gusts will start to drop down. It will still be breezy overnight tonight, but not nearly as gusty. So that wind will hang around through a good portion of the day. We're looking at our temperatures limited to the 60s through this afternoon, quickly falling into the 50s this evening and then 40s tomorrow morning. Quick look at the next few days, especially through the weekend. We warm back up Saturday into Sunday, but yet another front moves through Sunday afternoon and evening to drop our highs back into the 60s. And that's just part of the roller coaster that we're going to be going on over the next seven to 10 days or so. Promised you a sneak peek of the Thanksgiving Day forecast. Still a touch early, but it does look like we could have some rain around on Thanksgiving, a fairly cool and damp day with High temperatures potentially in the 60s. Still several days to work out that turkey day forecast, and we'll continue to keep you updated, guys. Katie, we volunteered to call people about the eclipse overnight and let them know it was happening, and nobody's taken up us up on that. No, nobody, nobody wants our phone call. I can't imagine they do. <laughs> it's nice of you, though. Thank you very much. 923, about 58 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, cancer-causing hotspots are all around the country thanks to refineries putting out bad air, and one of them right here in San Antonio. We're going to hear from a resident who lives near that area after the break. Kind of an unusual question. Do you live near or uh, near or at a cancer hotspot? A recent analysis published by the nonprofit journalism outlet ProPublica created a map based on federal data that shows more than 1,000 cancer causing air hotspots around the country. And one of them is here in San Antonio. It's one of the larger industrial sources on the city's south side. And Arlicia Berrera spoke to those who say they don't have a choice but to live and breathe there. This analysis was based on data from the Environmental Protection Agency or the EPA. And according to that information, those clouds of toxic air originate here at the San Antonio refinery and it reaches communities nearby. Many times it's communities of color who are put at risk for cancer. Less than a mile south of the San Antonio refinery is a small neighborhood Mrs. Frances Maldonado calls home. Well, I'm, I'm afraid because I'm sick. I'm sick about everything. Else. She says she suffers from asthma, a heart condition, and diabetes, and is afraid that the carcinogens in the air could cause even more harm. When do you smell it most? The, like the air right now, like right now when it's blowing, especially sometimes at night, you can feel like gas. Uh, we can't even cook out there because we're afraid. The map published by ProPublica analyzed five years of EPA reports and calculated and mapped the areas with what the agency calls excess cancer risk. According to the EPA, ideally a person's cancer risk from air pollution should be one in a million. However, in the neighborhood near the San Antonio refinery, one out of every 51,000th person is at risk of cancer. And while San Antonio's average risk is lower than other Texas cities, that doesn't ease the concern for those who live and breathe here. Sí, a veces 
Isaúl Hernández says since he moved here 10 years ago, he experiences dizzy spells. But when asked if he'd ever move, no. he, along with others in the area, are hoping things change. But they won't move because rent is cheap. And while city leaders say they want to increase access to health care in these areas, District 3 Councilwoman says the real change will come from Austin. Now it's the state's opportunity to, to go in there and see how we can um, we can reduce reduce what's coming out of there. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. And we reached out to Allegis Refining, which owns the San Antonio refinery. The company responded to the report saying that they have been investing in replacing, repairing equipment and increasing monitoring to the refinery to reduce emissions. You can read the full statement on our website at KSET.com. Right now it's 929, about 58 degrees. There is more ahead on GMSA at 9. Kidney disease is a major problem in the U.S., but especially here in Texas, how one local doctor is now heading the program to combat the disease. Next. The first dozens of students missing out on UTSA's bold promise simply because they do not apply. Details on what the program does for students after the break. Hi, welcome back. It's 932. So it's a missed opportunity for so many. UTSA has a program that covers 100% tuition and fees for students, but most who qualify don't take it. That's right. Two thirds of students who qualify for UTSA's Bold Promise program turn down the free money. That's a big deal because on average, UTSA can cost more than 13 grand a year. Our Patty Santa shows us how Bold Promise is helping students. I mean, it's free money, like who doesn't love that, you know? Giovanna Gallegos, a junior at UTSA, remembers her reaction when she got the letter of acceptance to UTSA and the news that she was accepted into the Bold Promise program. I checked the amount and I was like, wow, that's unbelievable because I don't recall applying for a scholarship. With the use of the free application for federal student aid and the BOLD program, 100% of her tuition is covered, leaving her to graduate debt free. I don't really have to worry about that, you know, add something else to the list of bills now because now you're an adult. Now you have things to pay for. It helps her focus on keeping up her grades, which is required to stay in the program. What we don't want is for students and families to price themselves out of a four year degree. Arnold Trejo with UTSA says the two year program is now available to students whose families make under $70,000 a year, expanding the threshold from $50,500. What we're talking about is expanding affordability to our students, to low to middle income students. Gallego says without the program, college is out for many families. It's hard falling into that middle class category where your family makes enough so FAFSA doesn't give you anything, but they don't make enough to cover your tuition. Students who graduate at the top 25% of their high school class are accepted to UTSA and fill out their FAFSA form are automatically considered for the Bold Promise program. More than 1,300 students are enrolled now. The average financial gift is more than $13,000. You multiply 13,000 times four, that's a very handsome uh, a financial aid package for you to attend and, and get, get a college degree. Still, only one out of three applicants accept the offer. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And if you want to catch that story again, you can head over to our website at KSAT.com. And the last year, KSET community collected 2,070 pairs of shoes for kids in need. And this year, the annual Share the Shoes Drive is back. KSET community teaming up with San Antonio Police Department to collect new shoes. And all the shoes will be donated to the local nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the nonprofit's facility. And Tiffany, why is this so important to this organization? Yeah, it's providing all of these resources already, but this is going to provide something that they are not necessarily available to the families that are living here. But here at the nonprofit organization, this campus is huge. But take a look. This is one of the rooms here that they provide different services, childhood services program. They also provide a youth and teen services program, and they also have a senior center. And to talk a little bit more about this nonprofit is Brandy Flores. Good morning, Brandy. Talk to us about the different programs that are available here. Good morning. So we do have an early Head Start program, and that is from children as early as six weeks to three years old. And then we have La Escuelita, 
which is from three years old to five years old. So we prepare our students so that they're successful entering into school. We also have our Youth and Teens program, and that is for students as early as five years old through 18. And we help them with STEM projects, art. Um, we also have programs where we help them with their social, developmental, and emotional needs. So we provide resources year-round for them, and we also have a senior center where we have bingo night, we offer Zumba and yoga to get them engaged and moving with the community. The West Side, talk to us about how important it is to serve this side of San Antonio. Absolutely. So our zip code in particular, the 78207 zip code, is the most underserved zip code here in San Antonio. So being able to partner with different organizations and having donors, the donor support and the community, we're able to provide different resources, programs and tools that our community needs to be successful. We want to empower them so that they can have a lasting impact on the community. Last, lastly, of course, what does this mean for all of you to receive these shoes this holiday season? Yes, so working with organizations like SAPD, we're so incredibly grateful that they're partnering with us for their annual shoe drive, being able to provide shoes for students that they wouldn't have these resources available for, to them so that they don't have to worry about where they're going to have their shoes or get their shoes. They can just run around and be a kid, play tag, run around, ride a bike, and not have to worry about that. If people have more questions, of course, they can swing by or they can also visit the website. Right? Absolutely, yes. Thank you. Please so visit much. our website. Thank you. <laughs> and of course, you still have time to donate the shoes. Check out these are the different locations where you can go right now and donate. You have until November 30th. And again, last year, KSAC Community collected over 2,000 pairs of shoes, and we want to exceed that this year. You can also make a monetary donation at this website, again, to support the nonprofit Good Samaritan Community Services. Mark, Stephanie, back to you. Tiffany, thank you very much. And again, folks, six substations all over town. We can all chip in. Thanks, Tiff. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, uh, nice and breezy out there. Oh my gosh, yeah, I heard the wind as soon as I, I woke up this morning and um, it's gonna be with us all the way into the afternoon. Wind gusts up to around 40 miles per hour at most and then they'll relax overnight. So if you haven't already kind of secured, maybe if you've got your holiday inflatables out in the front yard already, um, they may be wobbling around just a little bit. You may need to secure them through the afternoon, but then winds will really settle down tonight into tomorrow. So here's a look at our current wind gusts. Highest we've got on the board currently is 32 miles per hour in Hondo, but again, it will stay gusty through the morning and into the afternoon. Temperature wise, we're at 59 in San Antonio, 61 Carrizo Springs, and then even some low 40s across a portion of the hill country there in Edmonton. Edwards County. It's 52 in Fredericksburg, so certainly a change from yesterday. And as we head into the afternoon, a lot of us will see our high temperatures limited to the 60s. This time of year, our average high is in the low 70s, so it will be a cooler than normal day today. Again, a lot of us stuck in the 60s with mostly cloudy skies and winds sustained around 15 to 25, but again, gusting as high as about 40 miles per hour. At times, we've got a little rain on radar out across a portion of the hill country. And we've also got the weekend forecast to talk about. I'll have all that for you coming up in just a bit, guys. Hey, thank you very much. We had a problem earlier right now, uh, earlier in the newscast we were telling you about. This was on I-10 out at 1604 in East Bear County. Uh, we don't see much of a problem now. Traffic looks like it's flowing normally. We do have a couple of vehicles, including a big rig on that shoulder coming towards the screen. But it's really hard to tell what else is going on out there. The wind is kicking that camera like a two-year-old that hasn't had a nap. <laughs> <laughs> 9.40 right now. Chronic kidney disease affects more than one in seven U.S. adults, with Texas ranking fourth when it comes to kidney failure. That's why Governor Abbott has reimposed the state's chronic kidney disease task force. And he just named a chairman, a prestigious doctor who spent almost 30 years here in San Antonio. Dr. Francis Wright tells Courtney Friedman he's ready to make progress statewide. It's quite an honor and a challenge. A challenge Dr. Francis Wright says is 40 years in the making. That's how long he's been working on kidney disease. The majority of that time developing transplant services at Methodist Specialty and Transplant Hospital right here in San Antonio. He even performed former Spurs player Sean Elliott's kidney transplant 20 years ago. Now he's stepping out of the OR and into a directorial role. 
my main goal is to try and bring all the stakeholders uh, together uh, that uh, deal with uh, chronic uh, kidney disease. There are many treatments that can slow or uh, uh, stop uh, the progression of uh, kidney disease. Sometimes uh, uh, primary care doctors uh, may not uh, realize are available. Another huge goal is dialysis and transplantation access in a state that's mainly rural. Many people in rural parts of Texas either have to deal with some type of home dialysis or they have to travel uh, sometimes several hours, uh, three times a week to uh, obtain treatment. Wright wants patients to know their options as early as possible so they never end up in kidney failure. He calls the task force job an open appointment with no set time period, but he says he'll stay until he sees some of his goals met. There are so many things that can contribute to kidney disease and kidney failure, but here in Texas, the number one by far is diabetes. So we are here right now on the west side at the Frank Garrett Community Center at San Antonio Metro Health's Diabetes Fair. So there are tons of things that you can do right now. Glucose screenings, recipe books, food donations, some workouts, all things that help prevent diabetes and kidney failure, which we know so well are a huge deal in our San Antonio community. On the west side, Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. And time now, it's 942 and 58 degrees out there. Katie and David have been hanging out with a bunch of fifth graders for Katie's uh, science lab on the road. A look at how these first couple of trips went and what's next coming up on GMSA at 9. Welcome back, 945 past two Wednesdays. Katie Blake and David Sears have been live inside a classroom for Katie Science Lab on the road. That's right, and this is the first time Katie has been live from a school so far. A recap of how it went and what's next in the series. Right now we have Katie and David joining us live. Morning. Morning. Morning, assistant. Hey, how about assistant. that, huh? I'm it not works. used to seeing you guys together without your lab coats and goggles. Oh, yeah. Oh, I knew I forgot something. Mine's getting <laughs> dry cleaned. Yeah. Got there you sand go. and not watercolor good. and yeah. what, vinegar all over. David just hangs his messy. in the truck and he's like, I'm good. <laughs> a little messy. Uh, yeah, we so enjoyed going out to Carver Hall Elementary the past two Wednesdays. We got to hang out with some awesome fifth graders. And this is something new that we, we want to try to do, let's say, uh, once a month or so, or as we can make it work with area classrooms. And this is just a way for us to take all these cool things that we've been doing here in the studio, which is great, but bringing it to the students and involving them and uh, really letting them experience some, some hands-on activities. Uh, yeah. And um, just any way we can kind of help to enhance their their learning. That's, that's really what we wanna do. And we didn't just bring in these volcanoes. We talked with the teachers ahead of time to kind of coordinate with what they've been actually learning in their science units. So that was really important to us as well. It's fun to just bring in these random activities, but we really coordinated with them. And that's what both teachers told us, that it's very important, especially at this age in the fifth grade, for these kids to get hand-on experience. I mean, you can look in books and look at pictures all you want, but until you are actually able to touch it and feel it and, and build it yourself, that's when their learning really, really picks up a few notches. So they, and they did a great job, man. It was, it, it was a total and complete blast. Yes. I found out fifth graders are very, very smart. They yes. are very smart. So yes. there you go. They were but it doesn't have to be fifth graders. It can be any, any, any school, right. any age, right. any class. So we now that care. we've got the first two kind of under our belts, yeah. we would love to come to your classroom if you're a teacher, if you're child your adult child is a teacher and you think they would like to have us visit their classroom email me and we'll try to work out the details we've been talking to a few other schools already so we're likely looking at next year for doing this but we would love to be able to talk with some of our area Ooh. teachers and get something set up that's right next year's like just yeah, a month and a half away. Yeah, like next year. Yeah. We had got to this year. Wait, year. And by the way, uh, we were going to have bring back some souvenirs. Yeah. All right. Some but this is all we had left. We had a little vinegar and a Okay. Thank you. Some, some food uh, color. That's it. Yeah. Kids took, took the rest of it. Go <laughs> back I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm there the you. bitter one. I'll keep the vinegar. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll work on the, on the souvenirs better next time. But. Good yeah, this is great. A lot of fun. The again, video yeah. was great. Yes, you guys oh, look like you had a blast out there. All right, yeah. Look forward to doing it again. Thank you, Katie. David, uh, let's check in with Katie with weather. Yeah, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> Are you going to go all the way over yes. there? Yeah. Uh, okay. There, yeah. Cool. Take your time. Okay, great. Watch how this is oh, going to work. Yeah, let's see. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Hello. Uh, all right. Yeah, let's talk about the, the weather before I run out of time here. So it's 
Pretty chilly out there this morning. We've got a north wind in place. Our temperatures have tumbled behind a front that moved through overnight, but I want to give you a sneak peek of the weekend. We've still got Friday tomorrow, but a sneak peek of the weekend to just show you that we're going to have a quick turnaround back to warm and a little more humid over the next few days. Mid 70s Saturday, a lot more humidity and upper 70s by Sunday and then another front. So we've got a lot of ups and downs coming here in the next seven to 10 days or so in terms of temperatures and also in terms of our dew points. And ideally this line would be doing a thing. There would be some numbers, but it's not wanting to populate. Nonetheless, we are going to see some big swings in our temperatures and in our humidity over the next week, thanks to a series of fronts. The cold front train, as I like to call it, is uh, really in full motion here for us. There's the front that came through late, late last night. It's already out into the Gulf of Mexico. There has been some rain down in portions of deep south Texas near Corpus Christi. For our area, really not much rain, a few showers along the initial boundary overnight. But we've got a little bit of leftover activity across a portion of Edwards County, just to the north of Rock Springs, and down in southern Edwards County as well. This is a little bit of moderate rainfall and also looks like some lightning strikes uh, being detected. It's not much, but some leftover activity well behind that frontal boundary shouldn't last too much longer because we are cooler and drier typically. Rain doesn't like that. It wants warm and muggy conditions. So mostly cloudy and just shy of 60 at the airport. That dew point number is way down thanks to a north wind that has pulled in some drier air. It's also pretty gusty out there already, and we'll continue to see some wind gusts up near 35, 40 miles per hour through midday and then through mid to late afternoon. As the sun goes down and we get into the evening hours, our wind gusts will start to drop, but even through this evening, it will still be breezy. North northeast winds still 10 to 15 miles per hour through about 8 9 p.m. Temperatures also quickly falling into the 50s by this evening. Currently 62 in Pleasanton, low 50s across a portion of the hill country. Nice and breezy. Here are our sustained winds. They're about 15 to 25 miles per hour, and that's where they'll also stay through the afternoon. So staying fairly windy all the way through early afternoon, and then our wind speeds and gusts will start to let up as we get into the evening and overnight hours. So uh, looking ahead to the next uh, several days as far as rain chances go, we didn't get much rain with this front. We've got another front that will sneak through Sunday afternoon and evening with another really low chance of rain. And then look what's on here uh, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day does look like we could have a better chance of rain by the upcoming holiday. Your rainfall potential over the next week does paint around a quarter to a half inch of rain and less across a portion of the area and that will likely potentially come late next week maybe on Thursday for Thanksgiving Day. So this is a very, very early forecast for you, but it does appear that rain will be possible Thanksgiving Day with higher humidity and really a damp day potentially with highs just in the 60s. So we'll keep you updated there. In the meantime, enjoy this little taste of fall weather today. We'll be right back. Hey folks, the opening for the date for that immersive Van Gogh exhibit here in SA has been pushed back to February. That's right. It was initially slated to open today. So Dang. yeah, so all those uh, ticket holders, uh, they can either hold on to their tickets or they can maybe uh, look for another uh, exhibit in another Texas uh, city. The producer said, I sincerely apologize for late notice, but unfortunately the immersive Van Gogh San Antonio is being diluted due to venue related issues. KSAT reached out to them for uh, informa more information, but we have not heard back. Uh, and also anyone looking for a refund can also email them. Of course, all this information is on our website at KSAT.com. Check it out, but it's been bumped again from uh, starting this week to February. Have a great day.